According with Wikipedia, compositing is the combination of visual elements from separate sources into single images, often to create the illusion that all those elements are part of the same scene. Compositing is often used to combine CGI renders of 3D models, visual effects and real footage using specialized applications like After Effects, Heat Film, Nuke or Fusion. These programs work with superimposed layers, each one containing one of the elements of the shot, that when combined, form the final image. They provide professional results, but require intense training and skills. Hi, I am Adol Navarro, and in this video I want to show you that Icon can be also used to combine real footage with 3D items and particle effects in a very simple way without the need of further compositing operations, allowing us to create cool sequences like these ones. I download the ISS model from the internet in FBX format, using 3D Change to convert the model in Icon's native format. Once in Icon, I converted the textures in PBR using Icon's automatic shader converter, and I spent a while tuning the texture maps, using the A dropper to select the material and dragging and dropping the texture maps I was also finding on the internet. So. After less than one hour, I got a quite decent model of the ISS for my sequence. I download as well a video of the Earth filmed from orbit, and I cut a section of approximately the length required for the sequence using my Vegas video editor. In the Icons project containing the texturized ISS, I dragged and dropped the video file while holding the control key. It created automatically a plane or billboard using the video as a diffuse texture. First of all, I set the self-illumination slider to 100, making the material light emitter, so it will not be affected by the lights in the project. And I set its condition as no shadows, in order to avoid undesired shadows projecting from the ISS model over the plane. Then. I scale the billboard, placing it in the back of the ISS model and filling the whole background. I use the video as a texture of a plane instead of using it as an icon background because in this case I can move the camera in the sequence, obtaining a cool parallax effect as the angle of the background image also changes with the camera motion. So I just needed to adjust the lights matching them with the video lighting and set the camera to get a very convincing sequence of the ISS orbiting our planet. Notice that the space station model has not to be animated at all, and all the motion filling is provided just by the background video and the camera traveling. Then I just needed to apply some filters when editing the rendered video in Vegas in order to obtain a cinematic aspect in the sequence. In this scene, I went a step further, using two background planes, combined with 3D meshes and particle effects, creating a sort of diorama where the camera was traveling. For the texture of the farther plane, I used a video clip of a volcanic eruption, while for the closer plane, I just used a still picture instead, because it was no motion in that area. I used Photoshop elements to edit a little the picture adjusting the luminosity, masking and deleting the areas I wanted to be transparent and removing people that will look static, saving the resultant image in 24 bits PNG format with transparency in order to keep the alpha channel. 
When loading these PNG files in iClone, the opacity map is automatically created using the alpha channel embedded in the image. When using images with opacity maps, I recommend to expand the canvas in Photoshop, leaving a small transparent frame around the image. Doing it, we ensure that all the edges of the image are going to be completely transparent. For this plane, I left the self-illumination slider at 80, so the light of the fire particles can actually affect the plane that looked more integrated in the scene. I used the floor grid of Icon to get help when adjusting the position of the camera, in order to obtain the proper perspective when adding the floor props. I adjust the color and the hue of the floor props to match with the image. But if your props don't have a similar texture, you can use part of the background image to create a texture that will perfectly match with the background. I recommend Substance Player as a free and very useful tool that allows you to create all the necessary texture maps from just a single image. In this case, a gradual opacity map helps a lot in the integration of the prop with the texture as plane because it blurs the edges of the prop, creating a smooth transition between the 3D object and the flat plane. These ground props allowed me to include more 3D meshes and characters in the scene, hiding the odd parallax effect that otherwise will be visible when doing the camera traveling. These terrain props are also useful because they receive the proper shadows from the other props in the scene that are very important as well, as they help to provide a feeling of depth in the composition. I add particle effects simulating fires and smoke, but the most interesting was the dust in suspension, because it incremented the feeling of depth, while the camera was moving as well through the 3D particles. Particle effects took time to be completely generated, so I started the project in the frame 301 alerting Icon that it should discard the first 300 frames in the final render. It ensures that all the particle effects were properly generated in the actual first frame of the animation. I played with the lights on the scene until they matched with the light in the picture. I also included the original background image as source for the project's IBL so the ambient light was matching as well the color tones present in the picture. IBL, or image-based lighting, works better with HDR or high dynamic range images, but common RGB images can be also used, helping to get the correct ambient light. Once again, after the render was done, I simply dragged and dropped some filters in Vegas to get a nice cinematic look in the sequence. In this sequence, I also create a sort of diorama, mixing again 3D models and particles with flat panels texturized with real footage. In the background, using one single panel will help result in clouds and lightings too big and out of proportion. So, I had to combine two panels texturized with the same footage. In order to avoid the planes showing exactly the same image, I moved the clips in the timeline, so they were not playing simultaneously. But I needed to merge the videos, making them look as a unique single image. So I overlapped the panels, adding a gradual opacity map in the second panel. In this way, the panel on the right was gaining opacity while being gradually mixed with the panel on the left. Remember to leave a black frame in the opacity map to ensure a smooth transition in the edges. And so, this is how I got a convincing white animated background for the project. Besides the background billboards, there is another plane over the city models. Its purpose is to illuminate the buildings every time there is a lighting in the video used as a texture. In order to maximize the effect of the thunderbolt lights, I edited the original storm video in Vegas, pushing the contrast. Doing that, the billboard becomes pitch black and doesn't produce any illumination except 
when there is a flash of lighting. This project is a good example of how real footage in billboards can be used to illuminate the scene. I disable all the lights on the IBL, so the only sources of light in the city were the materials with self-illumination values. In this kind of scene, activating the global illumination is mandatory, and it's very important to get the correct intensity. I set the bound strength to 3, but I pushed the number of voxel cones to 32, brightening the number in the field, because the slider maximum value is just 16. I wanted a sharp illumination, and the more voxel cones we set, the more well defined is the light emitted by the emissive materials. For the same reason, it's important to change the global illumination voxel mode to high resolution in the project settings window. It is also important in big sets like this one, where I had to redefine the anchor settings, augmenting the GI range, being sure that all the elements of the scene are affected by the GI box. The bigger is the GI range, the bigger the voxels become, so it's convenient to move the anchor closer to the camera in order to get the smaller voxels in the more relevant area of the scene, where the light details can be better appreciated. In addition to the global GI settings, Icon allows to set the GI parameters individually for each object that emits light, and that's very convenient as we can set the right intensity of the emission for each one of the billboards. In order to create the farthest skyline of the city, I used a couple of billboards texturized with pop videos. This is a very useful trick that we can use when the project becomes too complex and we want to save resources. We can build part of the scene in a separate project and render it in pop video format. Then we can place that pop video in the background and nobody will notice this is a flat plane if it displays far and out. I use the same trick with some planes texturized with clouds generating using fractals in HitFilm. And I converted them in pop videos using Pop Video Converter 3. In addition to the motion contained in the video, we can move and scale the panels during the animation, incrementing the feeling of motion or depth. These billboards intercalated between the buildings helped me to get a blurry effect caused by the distance and the foggy atmosphere. Once again, I didn't start the animation in the frame 0, but quite far away, beyond the frame 1000, leaving to Icon a lot of time to ensure that the rain particles were going to be completely generated when the actual animation was starting. As usual, I only had to include some filters in Vegas to add a cool cinematic aspect to the iClone render. This pipeline saves a lot of work compared with the traditional compositing process, as iClone's render provides the whole scene properly illuminated, both in color and intensity, not needing further layer adjustments. In this last project, the purpose was to create a move on iClone's camera simulating as much as possible the traveling of the original camera that filmed the sequence, adding some 3D models that will hide the undesired elements present in the video. In this case, we don't want any parallax effect, so the best option is to load the footage as 2D background in the iClones project. It ensures that the image is not going to change when we are moving the camera. I assume we don't have an FBX file to import the original camera settings and motions. We should do it manually, getting remarkable results with a little of patience and using some tricks. First, we have to create a camera in Icon and set its focal length. That, ideally, should be the same focal length of the camera that has shot the footage. But if we don't have that information, we must guess. Looking at the corners of a recording, the more distorted the images look, the shorter is the focal length, getting close to what is known as fish eye. Action cameras used to use lenses of 20 or 30 mm that show a strong distortion, while photographic cameras tend to use 50 to 80 mm lenses for portraits. 
In this footage, I didn't appreciate the strong curvature in the sea horizon or in the mountain shape, so I decided to set my camera to the standard 50mm focal length. I started the animation in the frame 230, leaving time for the generation of the particles and the wind effect on the objects with soft cloth physics. There was a jump in the first frames of the video. We can't edit the videos in iClone, but we can move them in the timeline. So I place it in the frame 200, discarding its first 30 frames where there was the problem. Once the duration of the clip was established, I loaded the dummy character of Icon and I activated again the grid, pressing Ctrl G to help me to get the right perspective. The trick is to find a reference point in the footage that will guide us during the camera motion adjustments. I chose the cylinder in the lighthouse top, using the railing as reference for the character's size and I moved the camera using the mouse wheel until the character was in position in the first frame. I repeated the action for the last frame of the clip, getting the first and last positions of the icon's camera during the traveling. Coming back to the first frame, I was moving ahead in the timeline using the right arrow key, adjusting the position of the camera every few frames in a kind of rotoscope process. Each adjustment creates a transform key in the camera track. Remember to set all of them to lineal to get a continuous movement in the camera. After a while, I got a pretty close approximation of the camera motion, so it was time to lock the camera to avoid accidental variations and start adding the CGI models into the set. Using a human character as reference, gives us pretty good idea of the proportion that the props have to have and the place they have to occupy. But as all the props are actually placed in front of the footage, we need to create some extra layer to hide the ideas that should be behind the mountain. To do that, I took a picture of the first frame of the background footage and I edited it in Photoshop, masking and deleting the parts that should be transparent and degrading the threshold areas in order to get a smooth transition between the background and the image. In fact, I used part of this image to create the texture for the rocks surrounding the castle, ensuring they will match in appearance with the ones in the hillsides. I placed the image in the project, just in front of the CGI props, and a little higher that the same picture showed in the background. So, during the motion, the panel image is the one that will be setting the skyline of the mountain, hiding possible inaccuracies during the traveling. In order to disguise the uniform edges of the panel, I included some bushes just behind it. It added detail and depth as I took care to make bigger the ones that should be closer to the camera. I added the dragon characters flying following paths as well as some banners with soft cloth physics properties and a campfire particle effect to complete the composition. Finally, I just needed to adjust the light in the project that mostly came from the IBL. I used Photoshop again to create the IBL source image, this time removing all the ground and leaving just the sea and the sky, providing me a quite accurate ambient light. Once again, I added some filters in Vegas to get motion blur to the dragons and a cinematic effect in the whole scene. And this is it. As you have seen, Icon can be also an interesting tool to simplify the compositing process, mixing real footage, particles and 3D models in a very easy and intuitive way. I hope you have found this video interesting. Until the next one, bye!